A rabbi said to his student, How do you know when night is over and day has come? Is it when you can look into the distance and tell whether an animal is a dog or a wolf? No, said the rabbi. Is it when you can look into the distance and tell whether a tree is an apple tree or a pear tree? No, said the rabbi. So when is it, asked the student. It's when you can look into the face of another human being and know that he is your brother or your sister. Unless you can do that, then it's still night. This week is Interfaith Week. It's deliberately time to start on Remembrance Sunday because it encourages us to remember, to recognise our common humanity, to deepen our understanding of each other and to work together for peace. The deep divisions highlighted in the USA presidential elections, the recent attacks in Vienna and Nice, the suspension of Jeremy Corbyn from the Labour Party, and the rise in hate crime and othering show that the need to build bridges and to deepen dialogue has never been more important. Lord Jonathan Sachs, the former chief rabbi who died recently, said, When you have friendship, you discover the people not like us are people like us. When that happens, conversations can begin. One of the riches of learning from other faiths and traditions is a new insight and understanding they can bring to our own tradition. In the Jewish tradition, Rabbi David Cooper tells a story of a young bridesmaid in St Petersburg 200 years ago who's kidnapped a week before his wedding day. A ransom of 10,000 rubles is demanded for his release. Three Talmudic students discuss the situation. The only man in the city with the necessary means to pay the ransom is a rich man called Zief. And in Hebrew, Zief means wolf, and he's not known for his generosity. One of the rabbis agrees to approach him on the condition that the others observe but say nothing. The three pay Zief a visit, and after the initial pleasantries, the rabbi tells Zief the sad story of the bridegroom's kidnap. And to the friend's surprise, a tear forms in Zief's eyes. He says he's touched by the plight of the young man and agrees to help. He takes from his pocket one dirty kopeck, equivalent to a penny, and he hands it over as if it were a major contribution. The rabbi lavishes him with praise. Oh, sir, you do not know what this means to us. We are so grateful for your generosity. I want to bless you and your wife and your children, that you should be successful in your business, that you should be the beneficiary of good health, that you should be graced with love. On and on he went, giving blessings in abundance. As they were about to leave, Zief said, I'd like to help some more and gave another kopeck. The rabbi began another round of praise. As they were leaving, Zief called the group back and said he now felt called to make a serious contribution. He gave the rabbi one rouble. Another 10 minutes of praise ensued. As they walked down the street, the rabbi's friend said, we've been here for over an hour and all we have is one rouble. At this rate, it will take us 10,000 hours to release the young man. We'll be lucky if we get him out of jail in five years. The rabbi ordered them to be quiet. And sure enough, 
Zayef called after them. Teachers, please come back. He gave them 10, then 100, then 500, then 1,000 rubles, and finally, after a dozen more returns, he wrote out a cheque for the full 10,000 rubles. The rabbi's friends were amazed and asked how he'd done it. And the rabbi said, when we harden our hearts, it stops love getting in, but it also stops love getting out. Every time we do a good deed, it builds the capacity to do more. Each little opening of generosity leads to another. No matter what you want to accomplish, you can begin with something that may seem small or trivial, even a dirty penny. The story of the dirty penny is, of course, a metaphor for spiritual awakening. We have many wisdom teachings about the potential for human awareness and spiritual awakening, but unless we begin to actualize them, they remain simply ideas, abstractions. The story of the dirty penny reminds us that we can only reveal this light by opening ourselves to it one step at a time. Last week's gospel story was that hard teaching of Jesus of the parable of the ten bridesmaids. On the surface, the bridesmaids look the same, but they aren't. Five are ready, five aren't. Five have oil for their lamps, five don't. The five who haven't got oil ask to borrow some from the five who have, but are told they can't. And when the bridegroom arrives, he says that he doesn't know them and they are shut out from the celebrations. It seems unchristian, doesn't it, not to share the oil until we see the oil as a metaphor for spiritual awakening. No one else can do your inner work for you. No one else can fill your oil lamp. No one else can make you wake up. It's something we each have to do for ourselves. This gives us a lens through which to look at this week's Gospel reading. In today's Gospel reading, we have another hard teaching of Jesus, the parable of the talents. In the parable, we hear of how a wealthy man has gone away for a long time, but given his money to three slaves, each according to their abilities. To one, he gives five talents, to another, two talents, to another, one talent. Now, a talent was 15 years wages for a daily labourer, about £300,000 in today's money. So we're talking substantial sums. The first and the second slave had taken time to build relationships and investments. Both had doubled their money. But the third slave played safe. He simply buried what he'd been given and did nothing with it. It wasn't active in any way. Several years ago, I was on retreat at Lee Abbey when one of the host team shared a prophetic dream. She dreamt that God had invited her to fill up her supermarket trolley with whatever she wanted, but she only had one minute. And no, she didn't fill it with toilet rolls. She raced around the store excitedly, thinking about all she could buy. But when she got to the checkout, all that was in her shopping trolley was chewing gum. God said, I offered you everything, and that's all you've got. The greatest risk is not to risk anything. The greatest risk is to play safe to live cautiously, to not live up to the full potential of our humanity. 
God wants to give us the love that makes us different persons. The love that dissolves the fear that separates us from each other. The love that calls us to be people of courage and trust. And what is the talent? The money given by the master in the story. It's relationship with God and the invitation to a transformed life. God, in Jesus Christ, gives us the greatest gift imaginable, an invitation to participate in new life, a Christ-like life that crosses frontiers, that breaks boundaries, that gives us a vision of what is due to all human beings, of what all human beings are capable of as they respond to that love. And in case we're too quick to fall into binary thinking and draw lines between insiders and outsiders, the third slave challenges the status quo and calls out the master's exploitative business practices. I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid. Do we really know, as well as we think we do, what's good or bad? Who are the righteous or the unrighteous? The insiders or the outsiders? It challenges our basic structures and assumptions and prevents us from summarising the way God works into neat structures. We get the feeling that, that this isn't the end of the story. I want to close now with a poem by Ruth Patterson, inspired by her reconciliation work in Northern Ireland, called The Hand of Friendship. And even though we can't extend a physical hand in these COVID times, I hope you'll understand the sentiments. If your heart is for peace, and my heart is for peace, give me your hand. Give me your hand. So small a thing to ask and yet so big. If I let my hand touch, grasp, clasp your hand, then somehow I have crossed the Rubicon and I cannot be the same. I cannot be the same if in the clasping of your hand I dare to raise my head and look into your eyes and see a mirror image of myself. Frightened of trusting, fearful of the unknown, scared to admit your humanity, to be open and vulnerable, lest I am invaded, taken over, lest all they have told me over centuries proves to be true about you. Give me your hand, give me your hand before the moment passes, before the darkness overtakes and I discover too late that you were my sister, you were my brother, that together we were being called towards a future bright with hope and promise by the God whose hand forever reaches out to you and me in friendship and because of whom we can never be the same. And so, may the peace of Christ be with you, and may he ever flow between us as I give you my hand. Amen.